Yes, the Curry Cup is dominating. I'm very proud to have our in-house sports producer and editor, Volo Ganka, join us this morning to chat about some of the, the many permutations that are going to be taking place or coming into play this weekend. Yeah. I know you are as excited for this fixture as I am, I think mainly because the youngsters are getting an opportunity to yet again put their hands up as they've done all season. What a brilliant vote of confidence from Alistair Kutsia. I mean, Alistair Kutsia for me this season, him and Robbie Fleck must have had like grey hairs the entire time <laughs> because how do you leave a Springbok like Jean de Jong out on the bench and you're putting your vote of confidence in a player like Damien Delender. Damien Delender stays at inside centre, they're pushing Jean de Villiers out. He's the Springbok captain, Jean de Villiers. <laughs> They're pushing him out into outside centre. So, I mean, yeah, he's put a lot of confidence, like a vote of confidence into the players and like Scott and Tumeni as well, doing really well. One play of the month, last month. So, yeah. Um, of good. course, it looks great on paper. You know, it gets the sentimental vote. But when you look at the experience coming back into the Sharks squad, that's where the real danger lies. Yeah. You're playing against guys who have been in this situation many times before on the international level, on the Super 15 level. So this Curry Cup game really does get kicked up to a different place now. It's no longer just a local franchise competition. These are some big guns out there. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, it's 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 that, it's testament to like John Smith and them what they're doing over there at the Sharks. Like they need these big players because they've played the Western Province twice already this season. They lost both games. And I think coming back now into the Curry Cup final and you're going to have your Bok front row it's going to be a big test for Western Province over there. But then you look at Western Province and then their loose trio of Sia Colisi, Dwayne Vermeule and Dion Ferry. I mean, the two teams are just evenly matched. You just don't know what's going to happen, but it's, it's going to be good. That's a titanic line. We can understand why Newlands is sold out for this fixture, which is a <laughs> great vote of confidence. If we look at the way the teams have been performing, and we look at, in particular, our semi-final berth, the two players that stood out for me in the number 10 jersey, Dimitri and Pat, they have proved the deciding points in both teams. Patrick Lambie, I think, really is now putting his hand up for the mm. Bok number 10 jersey. But Dimitri is also, he's put the points over when, it's count, when it counts. Who do you think are going to be the key playmakers in this game? I think it's down to whoever makes the mistakes. Eh? Both, both players are just, basically make a mistake in our half and then we'll punish you. <laughs> basically, that's all it is. You concede a penalty, Pat Lambie's going to slot it over. Dimitri Kachakilis, like his spatial awareness, he just knows where to be kicking, when to be kicking, he makes the right decisions. And I mean, for both of them, they're both playing for that Bok jersey. They're looking at Heineken Meyer and Johan Gersen is out there as well. And everyone's just saying, okay, when Mornay Stein goes, I want to be number 10. And uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, and we saw this during the rugby championships, the young players, the mix of the experience and the youngsters. This is now permeating right through all of rugby structures. Mm. Someone like Alistair Kutsira has got to be incredibly happy about the depth in his squad now. Maybe that is a bit of a key to why he's using these young players, blooding them in, in these big match temperament moments, so he knows that going into the next Super 15 cycle, he has got a very experienced squad. And like you said, yeah, it's very much so. Like Alistair Kutsira does use this tournament to blood in the players for the Super 15. And when you actually look at Western Province as just a structure, like I'm blessed that I get to work like at Expresso and get to see the young players at school level. And you see the players that Western Province gets in at school level. Like now they've got Eervel e Phil Yun and they've got um, playing Jacques um, from Mjolin from Paul Hem. And these kind of players are, in a few years, you're going to see them in Curry Cup level. And you shouldn't be shocked that Western Province are doing so well and they have such young players because they get them straight out of school and they're fantastic quality players. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I think both teams have been trying to shirk the favourites title, so we won't call either team a favourite in this one. And it's going to be a mouth-watering fixture. Now, likewise, on the football fields, there is one really? match that we relish above all else. Yeah. Um, and we know it's Derby weekend. Pirates, you know, on paper, they, they look like they aren't having the most fantastic season, but when you actually do the maths, they've had a brilliant run. Of course, the CAF Championship, that has been a big focus of theirs, but they're not doing too badly in the domestic side either. No, they're not. I mean, like, Pirates have only played two games the whole season. So, like, they're bottom of the log, but we've played two games. And they've played 17 <laughs> matches in, like, three months. So, for me, I, to be honest, I know Pirates fans are probably going to be angry, but I would say let Chiefs have this one. If I was Pirates fans, I'd be looking at them and saying, you know what, guys, you can brag for the whole year. Go ahead, you guys brag. <laughs> Let us focus on the Champions League. They haven't been in it for 18 years. Go out there and dominate continentally and then come back and then pick up the season from there. They've got a tough run of games coming in. Um, two Soweto derbies, I think, in the space of like two or three weeks. 
and they still got to play Super Sport United. And they've already been crying about their players being overstretched exactly. because of this double schedule. So now, on the Chiefs' side, they know strangers to silverware. They seem to be getting a culture of winning back into the camp. Yeah, no, uh, I think Stuart Baxter, what he's brought back into that side is, is immense. I mean, they won the league last year. They're already the, the season openers, like, um, champions with the Carling Black Label Cup. So I mean they're not out with they're without knowledge Musona for this game, but I don't I don't think it's going to do too much. I think Chiefs will probably come out two one winners on this one. All right, well we, we might have to protect you as you leave the building. <laughs> Great to have you on board, my for friend. Sure, Welcome man. to the fold. We're going to take a very quick break. You can let the passion flow, whether you're a football fan or a rugby fan. Let us know who you are supporting this weekend in a bumper sporting weekend. Komkere Biki, Mary Cast from Seven Delan. They are in studio today making some amazing. Recipes and Danny Kay is about to blow the roof off our Seapoint studios. Stick around.